Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi, the righteous, the liberator of Jerusalem, the legendary hero of Islam, the man forged through the clash between Eastern and Western civilization. But do we actually know the real story of this great Muslim leader? What were his aspirations? What struggles did he face? And how did he earn the respect of both his friends and foes? In this series, as we explore Saladin's life, we would see how he grew up, learned military tactics, became the Sultan of Egypt and Syria, liberated Jerusalem and defended the city during Third Crusade. This is the story of Saladin from Islamic history perspective. Before we begin the personal story of Saladin, we have to discuss the geopolitical condition of the Middle East at that period to understand Saladin's aspirations. Around 40 years before Saladin was born, there was an invasion of Europeans in the Holy Land known as the First Crusade. During that invasion, the Europeans took the control of the vast swaths of lands in the Levant, taking advantage of the infighting among the Muslim rulers and weakened state of the once powerful Abbasid Caliphate. The Crusaders even took control of Jerusalem in 1099 and created four crusader states in the region. Decades passed by, but the Muslims could not recapture the lost territories. Until the ruler of Aleppo, Nuruddin Zengi, brought the Muslims of Syria under one banner and fight against the crusader states. By 1149, Nuruddin had recaptured Edessa from the crusaders and even defended Damascus during the second crusade. Saladin was then only 10 to 12 years old. No doubt that the heroic acts of Nuruddin inspired Saladin's young mind to carry the banner of Islam against the Crusaders. Our story of Saladin, whose original name was Yusuf ibn Ayyub, begins here. At the age of 15, Saladin was sent to Damascus, the capital of Senged dynasty, to complete his study under the mentorship of his uncle, Asad al-Din Shirkuh. He also began his military training in Damascus. After completing his training, Saladin joined the Zengid army under his uncle, who was one of the Nuruddin's generals. During that time, in the court of Fatimid Caliph of Egypt, a power struggle was going on between two contenders named Shawar and Dirham for the role of the Grand Vizier. At one point, Shawar was driven out of Egypt and sought help from Nur ad-Din. Nur ad-Din saw this as a chance to increase his influence in Egypt and in 1163 sent an army to help Shawar. The commander of the army was Shirku and Saladin also joined the campaign. Although he did not play any significant role in the campaign, this was his first military experience that has been recorded in history. So we will explore this campaign and the subsequent events to understand how Saladin started his military career. Shirkus army soon defeated Dirham's troops and reinstated Shawar as the Grand Vizier of Egypt. To keep the situation of Egypt in peace, the Zengid army established a barrack near the Fatimid capital, Cairo. The Fatimids were a Shia dynasty. So the presence of a Sunni army so near, the capital was not well accepted. Powerful people inside the Fatimid court started to plot against the Zengid army. Soon Shawar also betrayed the Zengid army and joined the plot. They invited the ruler of the kingdom of Jerusalem, Amalric I, to attack the Zengids. As planned, Amalric attacked the Zengid from one side and the Fatimid did from the other side. The Zengid army was trapped. Shirku sent a letter to Nur ad-Din for help. As soon as Nur ad-Din received the news, he marched out with his army and attacked the crusader states of Tripoli. Tripoli was an ally of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, so Amalric had to pause his campaign in Egypt and help his allies. Shirko used this opportunity to break through the enemy line and return to Syria. The Zengid army 
was saved from total destruction. After five years, the opportunity for revenge came. In 1168, Amalric broke his treaty with Egypt and attacked Egypt with a massive army. They almost reached the gates of Cairo. Fatimid Caliph al Adid was afraid of his life. His army was no match for the Crusaders. So he sent a messenger to Nuruddin to send an army to rescue him. So the Zengid army entered the Egypt again. Again, Shirko was the commander, but this time Saladin was captain of a battalion. The Zengid army quickly marched to Cairo. They came face to face with the Crusaders near a plain desert called Al Babin. The Crusaders had more soldiers and better arms, so Saladin and Shirko came up with a clever plan. Shirko took a part of the army with him and hid behind the desert dunes. The rest of the army was placed in front of the Crusaders under Saladin's command. Seeing a small army, the Crusaders immediately charged. This is exactly what Shirko and Saladin wanted. Saladin ordered his troops to fall back in the desert. In the sand, the Crusaders with their heavy armor could not move fast. As soon as the Crusaders entered the desert, Shirko jumped out of hiding and attacked with his troops. And Saladin turned back with his troops as well. It was a total annihilation of the Crusaders. The trade to Cairo was no more. The Zengid army marched into Cairo as liberator. The Fatimid Caliph al Adid greeted him as heroes of Egypt. As a token of gratitude, he offered Shirko the role of the Grand Vizier of Egypt. Shirko accepted the offer, but he did not forget the betrayal of Shawar the last time he was in Egypt. So he ordered his troops to execute Shawar. There will be no betrayal from Shawar anymore. However, only after a few months of becoming the Grand Vizier, Shirko fell ill and suddenly passed away. After a lengthy negotiation between the Fatimids and the Zengids, Saladin was selected to be the replacement of his uncle. So in 1169, Saladin became the Grand Vizier of Egypt. He was only 30 years old, still quite young and inexperienced in politics. Many emirs of the Fatimid court wanted to use this situation to gain more power. They united against Saladin and revolted in different parts of Egypt. So the first responsibility of Saladin as the Grand Vizier of Egypt was to deal with a civil war.